Uh, Aaron Cantu here with Coach JD's. Coach, what has been the emphasis in camp heading into this rematch with Tyson Fury? Health. You know, that's the thing that's, that's different between this camp and the last time we fought Fury. Last time we fought Fury, uh, Deontay had a really, like, he had, he had, he had injured his arm, his hand. Uh, and the right hand and so even though it was well by the time the fight came we had to save it in camp and the timing just wasn't that plus he wasn't resting like he should he wasn't eating like he should and now having gone through that experience um, he's he's uh, getting his rest he's getting his nutrition he's using both hands and he feels great now when I talked to you before the first fight against Fury you told me you wanted to get Deontay in position from a range perspective always putting him in the right position Trying to replicate Tyson Fury as an opponent, has, in, has that been a real challenge for you as a trainer? It's a huge challenge to replicate Tyson Fury because there's nobody quite like him. You know, so you, you can't bring in anybody that would kind of do what he does quite as well as he does it. So what you have to do is kind of piece it together and you bring in guys. I bring in guys that people think I'm crazy for bringing them in because they're like, he's nothing like Fury. But he's got maybe the same feints as Fury, or maybe there's a certain move Small that he does. Too. And so we're, put, we're putting pieces together and, and trying, to, you know, trying to create a whole picture. He's just, he's just a tremendous fighter with a tremendous skill set. And, uh, and, and I mean, I, I admire him greatly. That's why it's such a great challenge. I'm having so much fun with this camp is because I enjoy that. I enjoy trying to, trying to, trying to break it all down. And, and, and Deontay's got such a high IQ that he's seeing things as well. And he's, he's got uh, 12 rounds on, in the bank, IQ wise, in, in the data bank. So he's already coming from a place. And don't forget, Deontay scored knockdowns in nine and 12, not one and four. If he had scored knockdowns in one and four, and then not a knockdown, you would say that Fury had adjusted. But it wasn't that way. It was Deontay that had made the adjustments and scored two knockdowns in the last four rounds of the fight. That's important. Definitely, Coach. Great point. Um, now, I want to ask you about, he has three different trainers. You, Mark Greenland, and Coach Cuz that he works mitts with. Mm -hmm. Is the purpose of that because you want to get him uh, enough guys to filter in the volume work he does? Or is it to create some diversity in his style? It's survival. <laughs> yeah, he's... Uh, he, uh, he's hit me under the, the, the body suit and I had to have hernia surgery. He uh, hit me in the, with the suit and separated a rib from the cartilage. Um, he also has given Coach Cuz a fractured thumb and a fractured finger and dislocated Mark's shoulder once or either twice. So he needs that many mitt men to do the work. Now one of the byproducts of it, one of the advantages is that we all have very different styles and we all bring something different to the table, as it were. So that actually works out good that we're not, because if one person is doing the mitt work and they're not getting it right, you know, relative to the fight and how it's gonna play out and the movements and the, those kind of things, then you, you, you're, off, you're really off on the wrong foot. But because we have three of us, we're, we're more apt to get the whole thing correct. And again, it goes back to, back to how good we know we have to be because this is, this is big. This is a, a phenomenal fighter that we're in there with, and we want we want Fury at his best, and we want Deontay at his best. Definitely, Coach. And uh, this is a the magnitude of this fight is so big. I mean, uh, do you believe first is Deontay Wilder the most prolific and devastating one punch knockout artist in boxing history? And with a sensational win against Fury, does that put him in the discussion with? the best American heavyweight champions of all time. I think, I think you know, and I'm a historian, so I'm, I understand that young people have a very young perspective. You know, you go to the NBA and they're gonna pick somebody in the last five years. You go to the Major League Baseball, they're gonna do the same. Uh, so I'm looking all the way back, starting at John L. Sullivan, you know, and going to Corbett, and then going to Fitzsimmons, you know, and then going to Jeffries, and then going to Johnson, and then going to Willard, and I'm going all the way up of who beat who beat who, Beat who? And even doing that, uh, Deontay uh, probably hits harder one punch power than than anybody that's that's come through that I've ever seen. I mean, his knockout ratio is phenomenal. People used to not believe it, and they would they would denigrate the opponents. They figure he can't hit that hard. These guys must not be very good. But now that you've got the Stavernes and you've got the Ortizes and you got the Brazils and you got the Furies. And everybody he's fought has said the same thing. Like, nobody hits like this guy. You know, if you don't believe that, like if, you're not, if you don't believe Ortiz when he tells you somebody can punch, then I guess you just can't be convinced. But I think he, I think he, 
he does have that kind of power, which is historic. And I think that with a devastating win on February 22nd, that yes, he does put himself up there, not just with the Americans, but with the worldwide, with any heavyweight in history. Uh, you're talking about a guy that's, that will have done things that haven't been done before. Generational thing. I hope people appreciate it.